Hello everybody and today we have a very special interview for you with the gorgeous Elsie Spittle. As far as I'm concerned, Elsie is the queen of spiritual marketing and so Steph and I are really pleased to bring Elsie forward today and, uh, and just to have a lovely conversation around what this actually is and how it can support you in your business, your career, your life in general. So Elsie, welcome. Thank you. If I'd known that you were going to call me the queen of spiritual marketing, I would have worn my tiara. <laughs> moment and I'll go and get it. That's a lovely introduction and thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome, Elsie. Well, I know that Steph and I know you really well, but there are some people listening, perhaps for the first time, who don't quite know you personally or what you're about. So perhaps it would be nice to open up with just, Elsie, a little bit of uh, background and story on, you know, how you came across this understanding and particularly, you know, what got you, uh, what, what helped move you with your business? Because you weren't originally a business owner, as I understand. No, um, I, I was a homemaker. And um, my background is, is that I was, Ken, my husband Ken and I were lucky enough to know a man called Sid Banks, who uncovered these three principles underlying spiritual marketing. And as it turns out, um, we knew him before he had his experience and were great friends with him. And then, um, just kind of a mystery in life. He had this profound experience where he realized there were principles underlying how we create our moment to moment experience. And when he shared this with us, what he had uncovered, and he always talked about uncovering these principles rather than discovering them. The point being that they've always been around since, since time has been here on this earth. And, um, and that the message isn't new. It's just in contemporary times that um, we have this power to create our experience, that it doesn't come, our experience doesn't come from the outside in. It comes from the inside out. And so this was not a message that I was happy with when he shared it with us, because prior to that um, message or that insight that he had, um, he, he was somewhat insecure in his work and his life and his family relationships, as were Ken and I. And uh, so I had a great deal of resistance. What brought me to the table was my own insight. I mean, even though Sh Sid shared his wisdom with us um, kindly and compassionately for a year and a half, and we fought him uh, with everything we had in us because we felt like the rug was being pulled out from under our feet, like our whole belief system was being shattered, built on its outside in. You know, we're unhappy because of our circumstances. We didn't know that we were unhappy because of how we thought about our circumstances. So it was having my own insight that showed me that there was really something very powerful that I had not been aware of. And that power was coming from inside me and every human being on this planet. And so I began to listen in a different way. And um, I had the privilege of, of being able to tag along with Sid as he started to share his wisdom once he'd left his own, his own regular job. And I saw how he shared with people that he shared from a feeling of service and of love and understanding. And that feeling drew people to him. So I just absorbed that feeling and absorbed kind of the process of what I now call spiritual marketing just by osmosis. Like I never ever said to myself as I observed him, oh, you know, this is spiritual marketing. I just observed a man coming from a place of service 
And I saw the results of that, that people were drawn to him like a magnet. And that's how his business began. And that's how I learned, you know, to that spiritual marketing, the difference between spiritual marketing and traditional marketing, I discovered, is the difference between selling and sharing or selling and serving. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Steph, what's coming up for you? Oh, a lot, a lot. <laughs> I, I was just thinking as you were talking, Elsie, I remember in my, my business career before I came to, to sharing um, the principles behind spiritual marketing, um, I remember being very uh, involved with trying to find ways to build a business and try and find ways to find clients and try and find ways to um, make sure that my business would sustain me. Um, and then I came um, across this idea of service, which was, of course, what we all do in business. So I, I'd really like to get your take on what the relationship is between building a business and being of service to people. Okay, that's a great question, a great observation. Um, and again, perhaps if I had been a business person before in my, I, in my life, I might have had a different take on things. So in a way, I'm really grateful that I came to the table as a novice, as naive, in the same way that like, I, I never studied psychology. And when the first psychologist came to Salt Spring Island to study with Sid, they had a lot of baggage. And yet there was something about Sid's service that, again, um, superseded their belief system, just as it did mine. Mm -hmm. And so I was grateful that I didn't have a lot of baggage in terms of my belief system in psychology or a belief system in business my naivety was really a blessing. And, and so again, the education was observing Sid at work and the results that occurred because of his feeling of service and that he wasn't, like he wasn't looking for outcome. And I came to that naturally as well, based on my observations and also based on, I was so glad to share because my life had changed so much that I, I felt it was a privilege to be able to share the one insight I had that transformed my life. It was one simple insight that thought creates feeling. Mm -hmm. and, and the change was so powerful in my life and my family's life that I was delighted to share that. So I had no thought of creating a business. You know, I wasn't looking to build a business. I wasn't looking for outcome in my sharing. I just was so innocent. It's like it was a privilege to share full stop. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then... What came out of that is people, I could see that people were touched by that. I could see people were touched by the feeling that came out of me when I shared. And that was the marketing. You know, later on, as I became more aware, I could see that that feeling that came out of me as I shared without selling and shared without looking for outcome, there was a freedom there. And there was a feeling that drew people to me that then built my business naturally. Mm -hmm. And then kind of looking back, it was like, wow. And, and it was like people commenting on that I wasn't looking for business, that I didn't even know how to market. I did market ultimately as I, I did, you know, leave Salt Spring Island with my husband and family at Sid's encouragement, he was like saying, go away now, you know, all of you people, 
that have been here studying with me. It's time to go on your own and do your own thing, however it makes sense to you. And I didn't know what to do, but I, I knew to be still until insight would come, until wisdom would guide me. And then some insights came about how I might share with the college or with communities or with the hospital that I could offer certain easy, you know, um, like easy programs about reducing stress and that you can live in a place that's stress-free and how this would help your health and mentally and physically and things like that, like insights that just came to me that were down to earth and common sense and practical. But even that, because it was based on inspiration, it had a different kind of feeling to it. Like I wasn't working it. It was based on inspiration. And you know, like from what you said about when you were starting your business, there's a different feeling between when your material is based on inspiration and insight and when it's based on how you think it should be. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you, how, how do you see that? Yeah. <clears throat> I, I think mm -hmm. for me, the, 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 the effort of marketing became very overwhelming because I came from a place of uh, insecurity, came from a place of fear. And that, that made it feel really tough. That made it feel really hard work. So what I'm hearing you saying is that to come from a place of service before that, it, it takes away the, it takes away the, the self. It takes away the, the, the need for, for security, the need to uh, obtain clients and the need to get the right program and not to be embarrassed. But just if you're responding to what is needed in the moment through wisdom and through service, everything else follows. Yes, yes. And, and the key thing to me, Steph and Grace, is that, again, because of my naivety, I, when, when these ideas, these new ideas came to me that I'd never thought before, so they were insights, just little tiny insights about what I could say to uh, continuing education in a college or what I could say to a hospital where they're working with wellness and how to, you know, bring along their patients and their staff. And, and then when the information came out of me and I would type it down and then look at it, like I was, I was excited about it because it's like I was looking at was what was being created. It was new to me as a, as a human being, what was coming to me spiritually. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there's a real freshness yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what life wants to create through you. That's right. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> and even when it didn't turn out, like those little flyers that I put together and, and where I did cold calls and, you know, found uh, communities and knocked on doors, went to the hospital, went to the, uh, the college and all that. None of them came true. I didn't get a job with any of them, mm -hmm. but something came from somewhere else that I totally wasn't expecting and hadn't heard of. And I remember Sid telling me way back in the early days, like, and this is just a common saying in terms of energy, like, you know, you put the energy out, you'll get back something. It may not be what you expect, but whenever you give out energy or love and understanding, something will come back in. And it, it's that, it's um, full circle back to the feeling again, underlying that. It's like what you said, Steph, you know, that if you're marketing from insecurity and need, chances are you aren't going to go far. 
-hmm. And I just had two examples, if I may share as briefly as I can, if that's okay. Sure. Two examples from two clients. Um, one is an educator who had been released from his position about a year ago and um, was doing everything he could to find another job, even in terms of volunteering his time. And when I spoke with him the other day, um, when he shared this with me, the feeling, I could feel his insecurity and his need. And when I asked him to share what it was he wanted to offer, it switched. And he got into the feeling of service and what it had meant to him to offer this particular topic. Like it, the topic was authentic to him and real. And so when he shared it with me, there was no insecurity. There was just this lovely feeling of service. And I said to him, wow, like that's incredible what you want to share. You're hired. Like I would hire you in an instant when you share that way from service. And he said, but I was so scared. And that's why there was that feeling of insecurity. And I said, but what about the courage you had to go out and share even though you were scared? Like, did you give yourself credit for your courage? And he said, well, no, I never even thought of that. But see, that's what I saw and highlighted for him is that, wow, like, where does that courage come from? If not from your wisdom, like he was scared, yes. But then he went out there and he did it. And instead of honoring his wisdom and courage, he honored his insecurity until we spoke. Wow. And then he left, you know, our conversation, seeing himself in a different place. And then another young man who's been a, a stay-at-home father for a while, as his wife worked, um, it finally came to the point where they needed more income. And he also struggled with some insecurity about, now, how do I build my business? He's, he's been wanting to coach, but nothing has really been landing for him. And so he kind of fell back on some of the technical work he used to do because he felt he could get a job that way. And so often I notice that sometimes when people have gone through principals training and they want to become coaches where perhaps they haven't been coaches before, but they're so moved by the change in them that they, they're inspired then that they do want to serve but then they switch back to the insecurity or the old traditional mode of, okay, now this is how I'm going to do it. And so that wasn't working for him, but he came to the conclusion with the help of his wife, okay, I, I've got to bring income. I've got to help the family and I need to bring in some income. So I'm going to apply for this particular position. And he said he hadn't written up um filled out an application for like 10 years. And he said, but he was just so in the moment with this application that it just flowed from him. He was so in the zone and it, it wasn't like to do with what he had thought he would like to do. He may circle around to that again. But what I loved was that he was in the zone when he applied for that position and the feeling was there, chances are he'll get that position. Yeah. But again, it for him, when I was going on about like, that's so beautiful that you were in that beautiful space and the answers just flowed, even though you hadn't filled out an application for 10 years, like, well done. And he was going, well, you know, like that's a non-event. Well, it's not a non-event. That's wisdom, again, guiding you. And that's one of the things I'll end this example bit with, is that honor your wisdom. What may look like a non-event to you, perhaps pause after hearing this conversation we're having and, and honor what looks like a non-event. Mm -hmm. 
So true, Elsie. Such mm. words of wisdom. You know, um, as you were talking, it, it struck me just how often people I speak with are not so much honoring what they are creating, but getting really stuck on having things perfect and getting the logistics sorted out. And how do I do it? And I've got this idea, Grace, but I don't know how to do it. And, you know, that was me for a long time too, before I came across this understanding. You know, my journey had been really looking at the formula, <laughs> the right way to do it, the correct way to share it and market it. And, uh, you know, I had probably the, the best of branding, the best of photo shoots, the best of websites. But, you know, as you're talking and I'm hearing on a deeper level, you know, none of those things were the reason that people came forward and actually wanted to uh, engage, work together. When I hear you speaking, I'm reminded of that deep level of service and wanting to be of service. So what would you say to those, uh, those really starting out, Elsie, who perhaps are getting lost in that idea that there's a right way, that, that they, you know, they're looking at everybody else's stuff in particular and they're wondering, how is she doing it? How is he doing it? You know, I need to, there must be a correct way to do it. And then getting stuck on logistics and getting it perfect. Yeah. I strongly recommend that in that situation, you go back to what's real for you. Forget about everybody else. Bring out what insight even if it's one insight you know what what was that one insight that you had that has started to change your life that that was what was real for me that was what started my business was sharing that one insight about thought creates feeling because i had no comprehension of that and and I certainly was petrified when I first started to speak publicly. And also in those days, wasn't even considering starting a business. It was my continuing education through working with Sid, that he would invite me to work with him and you know, share oftentimes before him. I was like the, what do you call the act before the main event? Oh, yeah. The warm up act. <laughs> the warm up act, right. And I thought when Sid first asked me to do that, it was like, Sid, are you kidding? Like, I'm petrified. I'm frozen with fear. And I'm supposed to be your warm up act. <laughs> he, he had faith in me because he knew me under my insecurity, and that's what he looked to. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's kind of what allowed me to step onto that stage and yes i just blathered on in my insecurity and what came to me was share my insight that was all i had was that one insight and i shared that and in the sharing of that i went home and i i it just started to pour out of me without thought just wisdom started to pour out of me and it it set me down it settled the audience down and it was the feeling of that wisdom or another way of saying it our our true nature coming to the surface that touched everybody else in the audience and then you know gradually from that people said you know, could I talk with you? Do you do you do calls? Do you do coaching? And it's like, well, what's coaching? <laughs> you know, how do you coach? And and I learned that again through hanging out with Sid when we first went to talk with um, a several executives from the home office where Sid used to work, and I saw that coaching in terms of this understanding was simply sharing what's real to you. Mm -hmm. 
And again, like I saw not only the impact of that when I observed Sid, but I began to experience that myself, that when I shared what was real and authentic to me, it had magic. It did magic. Yeah. And that's how my business built. And I'll tell you, even now, as I, you know, after 43 years, going on 44 years of, of sharing, and I'm now, you know, wanting a quieter life and doing a little bit less. And I say this with as much grace as like I have to beat them off with a stick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because wow. people love the feeling. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I love you all, but, you know, just go and do your thing. Like, I can understand what Sid meant when he was going, like, go away now. Leave me alone. <laughs> Leave the island. Go and do your own thing. That's kind of a little bit where I am. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, you know, like I've done my bit and I still want to do some. I always will. But it's like, just do your own thing. You're so wise. I'm blown away whenever I talk with you, Grace, or Steph, when I heard that story you shared, you know, last year when you came to, a, I think, a practitioner's thing that Innate Health had put on. Oh, my word. You blew me out of the water as well as everybody in the audience. And Grace, I think you were there when that happened. It was incredible. Yeah. Shared. Just beautiful, beautiful sharing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I really want people to get, Elsie, is the simplicity of this. You know, and as you're, as you're sharing, I'm kind of just, I'm moved to remind people that this is the power of spiritual marketing, you know, as Elsie says, beating, nothing to beat people off with a stick, because you're just really drawing people to you from that lovely place. And, and I think that that was very transformative in my own life. And certainly it's been transformative in step and Steph and I have been exploring, you know, in what way we can help people with this. So for, for you to consolidate it like this in such a, an elegant way, um, it just points back to the simplicity. It really points back to that. You know, I've seen that in you both, as I've known you over the last couple mm -hmm. of years. Like, I saw people swarm you, Steph, after you had shared that example you know, people were moved to tears by what you shared. I have no doubt that you, people were asking you for mentoring and coaching after that. And same with you, Grace, like you and I have talked and, and you know, mentored and, and I've seen you change from where you also wondered, like, how am I going to do this? What am I going to do? And at one point, even when I looked at some of your material and I saw that was the old grace. And I suggested to you that say who you are now. You're no longer that same person. And then you did it. Like, you know, you, you had the courage to say who you are now. And I see now that you're getting more clients and you're doing these retreats in Italy that are fabulous. And so you both have had the courage to do your own spiritual marketing successfully. Yeah. And I love to see that because that's what this is about. You know, when us kind of old time pioneers are pulling back a little, and I think I'm honestly one of the first to really start to do that. Because I was the first to start. Mm -hmm. You know, I started before George did, before Dickon did. They came to trainings that I did with Sid. Mm -hmm. and now I'm pulling back a little bit because that's what I want and and they're still pretty gung-ho bless their hearts <laughs> that's not what I want anymore you know mm -hmm. less is more for me and I've been going in that direction now you know for a couple of years and continue to honor that mm -hmm. and so it does my heart and soul it, it just so good when I see how you two are doing and others that I'm speaking with, that you really are walking your talk in a way that not everybody does. Mm -hmm. And funnily enough, it's, it's even easier, right, Steph? Yeah. <laughs> it's much easier this way. <clears throat> 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I, I just want to say on the back of that, um, that, that we have people like yourself and Chip and Dickin and George to look up to and to, and to uh, be inspired by. <clears throat> but, but you, you didn't, you, there was just you and Sid. And, and, and it amazes me how you could go out into the world and create such an impact with from from absolutely nothing with with absolutely no books no no videos no audios no, how, how you went out into the world and you just did it with uh, the purity of your intent and the purity of your understanding um, it, it it makes me humble uh, because i you know i still have a lot of uh you know, uh, insecurity about my ability to speak and my ability to to write articles and to 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 do coaching and um, it's just interesting. I, I'd really like you to speak to um, maybe some of the people that are coming to this for the first time who who know that what they want to to share how they want to uh how they want to share it with the world but they have they have uh very little confidence in their own ability to speak and their own ability to write and their own ability to 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 kind of share what they what they need to share with the world you know what just came to me steph as you were saying that is confidence comes from wisdom from inside that's that's where you go for for confidence and trust that Mm -hmm. just trust that and do it you know what I mean honestly like share your insights and when you share your insights in order to share those insights you already are coming from home because first of all we're always at home where the insights are born where they continue to reside where the confidence to share something from nothing comes from, where that rich feeling that is your marketing tool comes from, just do it. I mean, I did it when I was scared. Mm. So I'm no different than anybody else who was starting from that position. Yeah. And, and what propelled me was bottom line gratitude that my life had changed. That my relationship with my husband was blossoming, with my children was blossoming. That I, I was loving life in a way that I never had before. And when you look at that, at what you have, rather than what you don't have, how can you not want to share that? The other stuff on the periphery is just nonsense. And, and just don't pay any attention to it. it. It's like watching your own evolution. Because when you see yourself scared, <clears throat> and yet you still do it, that's evolution. And, and that's also consciousness in action, that you're seeing yourself, but without judgment. Because so often, like, this is what the educator who had been released from his position, he saw himself as insecure, but he was seeing it from his intellect. And then judgment and blame and failure all came into the play. When he was sharing that with me, I was really struck by his humility and his honesty that he could share that with me. And so I held that for him. Like, you know, look at your honesty, that you can share that, honor that. But again, you know, to him, when he was honoring more his intellect about, oh, I'm a failure, I was insecure, instead of, I was scared, 
but I had the courage to go and do it. You see, that's what, if your group that you're working with that are new to this, look at what you're doing rather than what you're not. Yeah. yeah. It's been a huge change for me, actually. That's Just hit. I mean, you pointed to that, Elsie, last year, perhaps the year before, you know, when we spoke together and it was just transformational. Just honoring what is working, honoring what is happening well, you know. So I really hope that everyone uh, that's listening does get a sense of that. I know they'll get a beautiful, rich feeling from there. Um, Steph, before we close up here, do you have any other questions for Elsie? Elsie, <laughs> we could interview you all day, Elsie. I, I, I could. I could have you here till midnight. I really could. I, I just want to say thank you. And what an inspiration you've always been to me. And I'm hoping the people listening to this will, will get a sense of how beautiful and easy and enriching spiritual marketing can be because mm -hmm. uh, and it's honestly the only way to go and as you say it's that's the effortless part yeah. and one last thing if i may yes just before you wrap this up don't look for outcome. Like when I started to work with um, urban communities, you know, where there was all this crime and dysfunction and heartbreak and so on, I was inspired by the first residents from uh, Dr. Roger Mills' first community project called Modelo. And when I first heard those residents talk, who came from a community that was like, the worst community in the city of Miami that the police were scared to go in there. And these residents were downtrodden, drug ridden, everything. And yet after this, you know, gaining some insight about who they are on the inside, not who they were on the outside, they were some of the most vibrant, wise people I ever had the privilege to meet. And they inspired me to move from business and working in um, healthcare organizations and so on, mental health care, um, to working in communities because I was so inspired by them right. and their vibrancy and their wisdom. And, and so then when I started to work in communities, I was not a community developer like Roger Mills was. I didn't know how to go about it. I worked with him a little, but I basically started on my own. And the only thing Sid said to Roger when he first started is just get to know the people, you know, get a feeling with the people. And Roger called that rapport. Mm -hmm. Sid didn't know the word rapport. Neither did I but I knew the feeling and the power of feeling. So when I was first offered an opportunity in Tampa to start a little community project, I went in by the seat of my pants. I had a one page outline what I could offer them about learning who they were on the inside and learning something about healthy functioning. And they said, what's that? The resident council said, that doesn't make sense. Like, our people wouldn't understand that. And I said, well, what would you call wisdom? And they said, mother wit. <laughs> That's what we would call wisdom in the African-American community is wow. mother wit. And so I changed the flyer to say, come and let's explore mother wit. And, and that, that was the thing, like I wasn't looking for outcome. I was looking for a feeling. Yeah. If we could connect and have a feeling together, I knew outcome would happen. Now, in a traditional sense, when you're doing community work and other projects, they're looking for research and results. And so you have to have goals and objectives. I didn't for that first little project. Later on, I did. But they were very simple goals and they were based on what the community wanted, not what I thought they should have. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. But that first little project I did, I had no expectations. I had no thoughts of outcome. I just was so grateful to be invited into their community and share with them, full stop. And they felt that. There was a freedom for them that they didn't have to live up to any goals or objectives and that kind of thing. There was a freedom for them and for me. So I just wanted to share that one last thing. Yeah. Thank you. So important. (laughs) Thank you, Elsie. Well, this has been really rich. Yeah. Can, can you share with us, Elsie, where people might find out more about your work and what, what's, you know, although you might not necessarily be doing a lot of private work right now, I know you've got some beautiful resources. So where is best to send people to? Probably to my website, which would be, you know, www.3, the number three, phd.net. And then there people will see my my business Facebook and a couple of events that are upcoming and things like that. And a new offering that I won't say much about until we actually launch it. But a new offering in uh, 2019, something that I haven't done before. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think I would. But I got drawn in by the feeling, finally. Even though I'd said no. Then a year later, I said yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's evolution. Yeah, yeah. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Beautiful. And you inspire me. That's the last thing I'm going to say. You talked about, you know, how myself and some of the early pioneers inspire you. You two inspire me. And thank you for that. And anybody who gets to be mentored by you or coached by you. Wow, they're lucky. Thank you. Bless Thank you. Thank you, Elsie. <laughs> what a lovely conversation today. Thank you for yeah. being here, Elsie and Steph. And we will sign off from here and hope that everyone who has watched this has really enjoyed it as much as we have. Yeah. So lots of love. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye, Elsie. Bye. Bye.